Imagine you are an English merchant. All your life you have worn clothes made from heavy wool, which is warm but can be very itchy. You are traveling to India by ship to bring back unique goods from faraway lands. Your ship is stocked with beads and spices to trade in return. One thought occupies your mind, the rumor of a fabric, soft, light, and not the least bit itchy. You've heard it's made from a plant you've never seen before called cotton. A legend has reached you that the flowers of this plant turn into tiny fluffy lambs. Imagine wool growing on plant instead of on sheep. No one had ever believed such a thing was possible, but you are just about to discover such an amazing plant. You look over the side of your ship and gaze at the endless blue water. Wait, is that a speck of land just on the horizon? India is in sight. When you finally reach the markets, you walk up and down the aisles, hunting for the one special item you've heard about. At last you spy it, away in the back. You walk up to the stall, reach out, and gently stroke the neatly folded pile of cloth. You are astonished at the softness. What a comparison between wool and cotton. You've never felt anything like it before. England will surely be glad to have this treasure, so you make sure to trade for plenty of the fabric, skeins of thread, and cotton branches to take back with you. After a long voyage home, everyone is delighted with the airy feel of the soft material, and soon you are asked to go back on a second voyage, and then even a third, to bring back much more. It is very hot in the Middle East where cotton grows, so in the cool, wet range of England, you know that cotton would not thrive. Even if the habitat of England is not quite right for growing cotton, it's the perfect place to spin it and make cloth. You could never imagine how the British textile industry would grow and change the world, and all because of your readiness to seek out the humble cotton plant. There were many merchants who sailed to India and came back to England with cotton goods. I'm sure none of them just even dreamed how much their voyages would impact the cotton industry. Next to food, cotton is the largest grown crop, and today the industry annually produces $21 billion in goods, when just a few centuries ago, no one in Europe knew anything about cotton. You are listening to Naturalist Kids Podcast, where we bring the stories of nature to life to encourage you in your quest to learn more about this great world. I'm your host, Joy Cherick, and today I'm joined by Abigail, age 13. Abigail is a part of a podcasting club and chose the topic for today's episode. She researched it and wrote it too. Welcome to the podcast, Abigail. If you love our podcast and want to see more episodes like this one about the cotton plant, please consider supporting us through our Patreon site, patreon.com slash naturalistkids. There you will find transcripts, nature study lessons, and additional resources to go with each episode. This episode corresponds with Nature Study Hacking, Cultivated Crops and Weeds. Nature Study Hacking teaches families how to get outside and use the nature journal. Head over to naturestudyhacking.com to learn more. Let us consider for a moment what a cotton plant is like. You might say soft or fuzzy or white. Some might describe it as helpful, who use the fabric so often. The cotton plant also depletes the nitrogen in the soil, which is an important element to the earth. In consequence, it lowers the quality of your crop. However, it can be resolved by taking a break from growing it for a while until it is the right season again and growing nitrogen fixers instead to improve the same soil. Nitrogen fixers, like we learned about in the clover episode, are sweet peas and clover and peanuts and soybeans. Cotton has many other uses besides fabric, such as making plastic and rubber tires and parts of the plant we have used in the past for medicine. Did you know the leftover seeds make great feed for cows? And then we see that actually on the third day of creation, that is when God designed individual plants. Here's a quote from Genesis 1 11. 
And God said, Let the earth sprout vegetation, plants yielding seed, and fruit trees bearing fruit, in which their seed, each according to its kind, on the earth. And it was so. End quote. Among these plants was cotton, of which we are learning today. The majesty of God can even be reflected in such a small thing, and we are about to reveal God's greatness in his perfect designs. Cotton starts out looking like a flower. Well, it is a flower, until the flower withers, of course. The bud gradually swells up, and it bursts open. Once it does that, the cotton appears in four big tufts with usually three to six seeds hidden inside. It's really the fruit of the cotton flower. The leaves have a distinctly maple-like appearance. Some of them have three lobes, some of them have four, some of them have only two. They are kind of an interesting variety if you ever get to look at a live plant. So Abigail, we learned that the cotton ball has cotton fibers that wraps around each seed. So can you tell me a little bit how and why? The seeds have fibers for protection and the individual seed has 10,000 to 20,000 fibers. What was cotton especially known for? Cotton was especially known for its incredible softness. In some countries where cotton never grew, people always wore wool clothing which can be rough and itchy. Cotton fabric is also stretchy. For instance, when the ambassador of Persia went to India and learned about cotton for the first time, he was so amazed at the softness that he came back with 30 yards of cotton cloth, all squeezed into a coconut shell. So Abigail, are there any specific bugs that will destroy a cotton crop? The ball weevil is especially aggressive. They will destroy nearly your whole crop by flocking to your farm to eat your cotton. Adults will eat the leaves of the plant, then they mate, and the female weevil punctures the cotton bud to lay her eggs. The eggs hatch, and the grubs will eat the cotton fibers inside the bud. In the early 1900s, the boll weevils came to America from Mexico. Nothing was working to get rid of the bugs until the 1970s when scientists finally discovered ways to decrease the numbers and the weevil's population plummeted 98%. The weevil has now been gone from all states since 2009, except in Texas, which borders Mexico, where the weevil populations are still large. Do we know the first location that cotton grew in? We know it came from India long ago, and it was said to be so fine as princes of India would wear turbans and robes made of it. There were even some recordings in the Bible of cotton. For example, the court of King Asahurus was hung with cotton curtains. See Esther 1 verse 6. So we have an early reference to its quality. We also know it was cultivated in China but only used, at first, as a garden flower. So Abigail, why was the cotton gin invented by Eli Whitney so important? The cotton gin saved tons of work, for slaves had to pick the seeds from inside the mass of fibers, which clings to each seed. There is also the trouble of removing tiny sticks and pieces of dirt and debris, all of this in very hot, humid weather. The cotton gin removed it for you by running the cotton in between bristles that would comb out all the dirt. Well, that sounds very helpful. I tried to pull seeds out of cotton fibers once, and it took forever. The cotton industry was known for the difficult and industrial work needed for cleaning and spinning and weaving cotton strands into cloth. Here is a fable from Aesop about how important it is for human life to involve industry and not slothfulness. Industry and Sloth by Aesop An indolent young man, on being asked why he lay in bed so long, 
carelessly answered, I know two fine girls, one named Industry and the other named Sloth. Every morning by my bedside, I am bombarded with different causes. As soon as I awake, one prays me to get up and the other entreats me to lie still. And they alternately give me many reasons why I should rise and why I need not. It is the work of an impartial judge to determine what counsel I should listen to. And in the meantime, I should lie here pondering what my day will hold until presently it is time for dinner. The moral is the lazy have more excuses for their sloth than the productive have for their industry. The word cotton comes from the Arabic word cotton, which means to form a nap on cloth. Describe a cotton flower, Abigail, its flat color and size. The cotton flower is white when it first opens, then turns a creamy yellow, then pink, then red, all in the space of three days. Then it withers. It's about three inches wide and looks very similar to hollyhock flowers. Cotton is in the mallow family. Marshmallow is related to cotton, but it grows in swampy areas. What other types of cotton have you discovered? There are many types of cotton. Two of the finest are Sea Island cotton and Egyptian cotton. Black cotton has black leaves and stems, and Pinwa cotton is one of the most common types. There are many songs that were sung in cotton fields of the southern states during the Industrial Revolution when cotton farming was a prolific cash crop. We will read you one that became quite famous as the war between the states came to blows. This poem is called Dixieland. Dixieland refers to the United States below the Mason-Dixon line that seceded and comprised of the Confederate States of America and almost always includes the Deep South. Here is Dixieland, written by Daniel D. Emmett, written in 1859. Oh, I wish I was in the land of cotton. Old times there are not forgotten. Look away, look away, look away, Dixieland. In Dixieland, where I was born in, early on one frosty morning, Look away, look away, look away, Dixie land. Oh, I wish I was in Dixie. Hooray, hooray. In Dixie land, I'll take my stand to live and die in Dixie. Away, away, away down south in Dixie. Thank you for joining us today as we learned about cotton. I hope you learned something new. Please join us next time as we discover the dandelion. We will leave you with a short Japanese poem called a haiku. This one is by Matsuo Basho, a Japanese poet. A field of cotton as if the moon had flowered. Mm-hmm.